Hey everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm not live streaming this uh, this series about so-called anarcho-capitalism anymore because the internet near where I live is such a pile of wet garbage that I can't live stream anymore. It's a bit disappointing, but it's okay. I'll just upload this video. So there you go. It's better than better than just giving it all up, I think, you know. But you know, it was every couple of minutes you'd get interrupted, maybe for a whole minute, because there's just no internet. I mean, what a load of garbage. Thanks for nothing, tell us. Um, <laughs> um, but as you can see, I'm gonna do it uh, in roughly the same format. I'm still here, um, you know, reading my old book and looking at what's right and what's wrong and all the reasons that I'm no longer an ANCAP. It'll give you a good idea um, into their minds, especially this chapter, I think. Um, I'm still going to be doing it, uh, you know, uh, the same basic way. I'll just read this book that I haven't looked at for 10 years and tell you everything that I think's wrong with it. Um, oh, by the way, before we start, um, I, I kind of feel like I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention the war that's been started yet again on the Ukraine. I mean, it's it's one of those issues that it's kind of an elephant in the room in a way. And I'm sorry, you, you might be watching this to get away from all the, the news and the talk about it. All I want to say is, like, it's very clearly an act of aggression by Putin and his and his generals or whatever, um, and I, I'm in favor of doing anything to stop it. You know, the main I, I kind of think the, the the best thing to do would be revolution in Russia. Like that would that would definitely stop its foreign wars and occupations because it would bring all those troops back to fight an insurgency. But I kind of think that's the best solution. The second best solution is to just put up a good fight against them, you know, like it, like they did in Vietnam, which would mean ideally you might try to get like guns and stuff to them if they need it. I don't know. Um, and at least as importantly to help people get out if they want to, if they're just, if they're refugees, then we should be helping them get out, you know? And I really think we should be throwing borders open to everybody, but the bare minimum we could do is say, like, yes, let's let in refugees. And, and you know, don't... You, you can say Ukrainian refugees, but I think it should be, like, all refugees, really, you know? So um, so that's that's kind of the long and the short of my feelings on the topic. If you don't... If you're not against this kind of aggression because of some kind of because because like you like something about Putin, or because you're using the the excuse and it's an excuse, I assure you that that Ukraine is full of neo Nazis. Like so is fucking every like country dominated by white people. What do you like? Really, the idea is they have like a six hundred member Azov battalion. Uh-huh, 600 people of all the, like, millions of Ukrainians who who are innocent of being Nazis and should, and, and want to fight back, you know? Come on, don't, don't bring that stuff up. Don't waste anyone's time with that garbage. Now, enough of that. <laughs> Let's talk uh, about rich and poor. <laughs> You'll notice in this chapter as I read that... Uh, that it, like all ANCAPs, again, it's the ANCAP mentality, um, there's very little emphasis on history. Uh, not that there's no history in it, but it's a very selective history, and it's not the history of this system, of the capitalist system, so it's going to be lacking. You know? Um so let's start with this Walter Williams quote. Walter Williams, the uh, the economist. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, when you just quote economists and stuff, like, how much do you really know? What's just has been debated for centuries, but let me offer you my definition of social justice. I keep what I earn, and you keep what you earn. Do you disagree? Well, then tell me how much of what I earn belongs to you and why. Well, the problem is with this word, earn. That's that's the the biggest problem because earn sometimes it kind of sounds like deserve 
you know when you earn money it's because you did work for it well most people who who uh who have like the most money they didn't work for it they earned it on paper but they didn't exactly work for it other people worked for it i dare say walter williams was like i think a professor like yeah he might deserve the money that he's got um, but it's not about the difference between, say, me and him, our distribution of wealth. It's because there, there are people with billions of dollars that they couldn't possibly need that other people do. You know, like, like is there seriously no case whatsoever for, for forcible redistribution in such a situation? What is William? I don't... See, I... It's been 10 years, right? I don't remember who, who these people are. Is this person famous? We're living in a sick society filled with people who would not directly steal from their neighbor, who are, but who are willing to demand the government do it for them. Damn you people. <laughs> um, I, I would probably um, be okay with government redistribution if, uh, if I thought it would really go toward like some kind of cause, some kind of good cause, but you can you can tell that it won't just by looking at the priorities, the budget priorities of the government. Any government could offer citizens things like health care, you know, universal health care, that kind of thing. Any of them could, because all of them, like, have a kind of bare minimum of funds that they take in in taxes. Obviously, they, you know, not everybody pays taxes, but, um, but like most people do, they take in like a certain amount of money. They could easily use that to like help the poor or something. But when you look at their budget priorities, you find usually that's not what they're doing. You know, like a tiny, you know, a, a collection of bones gets thrown to the poor, whereas like in, say, in the US, like, more than half of the budget, the annual government budget, goes into the military, <laughs> you know? and uh, and and it it might be the police or whatever. It depends on the state, but I mean, you can't really trust government to just take the money and do what you want with it, which is why I advocate stealing. <laughs> so let's read what I wrote. My neighbor has far more money than I do. Seems unlikely. Usually people live next to people with roughly equal incomes, or similar incomes, let's say. Should I be able to go over there with a gun and force him to pay me? No. No? When I do that, it's called robbery. But why is it okay for the government to do so? Is it no longer robbery? No, because calling it law makes it legitimate. <laughs> is it altruistic to force others to give someone else their money? Does anyone else deserve that money? Is it taking from people who is taking from people who earned it justified? Is that the only way to help the poor? <laughs> See, I think back then these were all like rhetorical questions, right? But I kind of think I could answer them now. Um, I don't worry too much about altruism anymore. I don't even really talk about it because, uh, like, we can you can kind of be selfish and altruistic at the same time. It's I don't know. It's kind of complicated. Um, so I wouldn't even worry about that. But then we've got words like deserve and earned, which are a little bit, you know, they, they seem also quite rhetorical. Does anyone else deserve that money? The, I, I, I used to, I, I've always avoided, not always, but for a long time I've avoided the word deserve because I kind of think, you know, there's no real justice. Nobody has what they deserve. Um, it's not, and, and again, it's not a question of that. Altruism, deserving or earning, I kind of think those, those questions are moot. I know it's weird, but, but it's, it shouldn't be about deserving. It should be, uh, at the bare minimum, it should be about need, right? So what if people need money? You know, I, I mean, obviously they don't need money. They need things like food and shelter and, and warm clothing and, and so on, right? Um, but that's, I mean, if, if you live in a money-based society, then, then that's relevant. So when we're talking about, like, inequality, we're not 
just talking about, like, I have enough to get by, but my neighbor is really rich. We want everyone to have enough to get by, and I don't see how that's possible in a system based entirely on money. Because there's always going to be people trying to take, you know, money from the people who have the least of it. It's, you know, usually it's the people on top, but every so often it's thieves and so on too. I mean, thieves, of course, will target the poorest people because the poorest people don't have... Um, you know, they don't have security, they don't have the means to defend themselves, usually, depending, you know, they they don't get, you know, the police protection or anything, so they get stolen from all the time. Um, is, taking it, is taking money from people who earned it justified? Yes. Is that the only way to help the poor? No. But it's a start. The problem with many statist arguments is they confuse the ideals of government, which vary depending on the person, but which will, may well include a major redistribution of wealth and opportunities, with the reality that government does not make us more free, more wealthy, more educated, or more equal. Okay, so so I kind of agree with this part, that, that statists in general tend to confuse the ideals of government with what it really does. And I think I explained that somewhere else in this book. I don't remember. Um, I think that's, that's you know, valid. Um, the government doesn't make us more free, true. More wealthy, more educated, more equal. Well, it could, it does make some people more wealthy. <laughs> uh, let's see. The desire to redistribute wealth is an exa excellent example of this flawed thinking. Sorry. <laughs> we need to take more from the rich and give it to the poor. Well, actually, this I'm okay with. It's just, again, I'm very skeptical of government doing it for so many reasons. <laughs> not only does that rarely happen in practice, such policies do not make things much better for the poor. Yeah, I mean, historically, that seems to be the case. It depends a little bit, though. I mean, like, you could call, um, like, a universal health care policy redistributive, in a way, right? Because, you know, what if, because, like, even a, even a poor person can get there, and they probably didn't pay much for it, right? And, I mean, as much as I hate the state and am skeptical that, that they're, that in places like, say, the United States, there could be a really universal health care program, it'd be better than nothing, like, yeah, see, the problem with ANCAPs is there's a kind of all or nothing uh, uh, kind of mentality to it. So, like, you know, if, because the government does such a poor job, or, you know, for, for whatever, for all kinds of reasons, of, like, you know, propping up the poor, of helping the poor, we, we shouldn't even bother. Like, no policies like that at all, you know? Strip the government down to, uh, you know, to just its barest of policies or something, you know, or, or, or you know, in, unless we're going to revolt and take and, and destroy the government, then, you know, no new laws or no new programs could possibly be good. It's a kind of all or nothing thinking, which is, which is very much inimical, I think, to anarchism, because anarchism is much, is very much a means and ends kind of uh, ideology, by which I mean um, that, you know, like if you want, you know, we want things like, say, uh, community living, community kind of democracy, right? Well, you can start working on that today. You don't have to tear down the government, you don't have to destroy the government in order to, like, you know, make decisions with your neighbors or whatever it means for you to build up community. You don't need to burn down every school to start educating uh, uh, kids or, or helping them self-direct their education. You know, that kind of thing. You can start on all those things today. And if you don't, then really there's it, it probably won't become a reality in the future. Uh, but you don't hear that kind of thing from ANCAPs usually. Um, but, you know, there is a certain means and ends to it as well, at least, you know, because, like, you could read um, Konkin, um, an agorist, something about agorism, I don't remember. He wrote a few books about agorism or agorism. Um, and, you know, he, you know, he, he took a reasonable 
like he was fairly realistic, you know, he took a reasonable kind of means and ends approach. Um, and so people who kind of do what Konkin suggested that, you know, that's cool. They're practicing, um, agorism, but, and, and I'd support them because I think for the most part, they're, you know, they're leaving people alone. They're trying to be free. I mean, that's good. <clears throat> they just should be stealing from the rich, that's all. <laughs> if a man acquired his wealth ethically, mm, ethically, I'll decide on the ethics of wealth distribution, which means he provided goods and services that people were willing to pay for. <laughs> well, okay. This is a good question, isn't it? Um, he, so, he provided something. Well, was it really him? Was it this one guy who provided goods and services? Or was it a whole corporation of people, hundreds or maybe thousands of people, who were all doing work? And this man acquired his wealth ethically by just owning, by kind of sitting back and, and raking in the dough. <laughs> Again, that's, like, that, that's so many rich people. Um, why don't ANCAPs acknowledge that? No, because even even owning and, and rent-seeking, even that is ethical. It's almost like, like, like you know, you, you can spend all your time saying how the state and the, and the law is unethical and wrong, but really, me, I, oh, former me, is going by the state kind of definition of ethical wealth, uh, you know, acquisition. Like, so why, why the state, uh, definition? Why are, why am I still, you know, why are we still stuck there? <clears throat> uh, so if you acquired your wealth ethically, then any so-called transfer or redistribution of that wealth must be theft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, wealth tends to be created through theft. It's kind of a long story, and I have talked about it in other videos, but if I could say it briefly, you know, like, basically, to, to, to acquire great wealth, usually what has happened, you know, in the past is um, what's called primitive accumulation, where... Um, the state destroys some something that's commonly owned, um, usually land back then, but now I mean it could be anything, um, and and by by taking away its communal nature, it it privatizes that thing, that resource or whatever it is, so that like one person or whoever the owner is can make money off it, right? Um, that means that there has been a major theft from the commons, right? That used to be like common land. Now it's all owned by uh, people putting their factories and stuff on it. Again, this is like a hundred years, you know, a couple hundred years ago or whatever. But um, like, like it's no longer your land. We've stolen your land and we've stolen you know, your means of subsistence on that land, because those things were all criminalized, things like fishing and hunting and growing your own stuff, even like making your own stuff, like making your own shoes, that kind of thing was criminalized too, you know? Um, so, so these things are, so this system is already based on massive theft. So it's like a little bit more theft, from somebody who has nothing because it's all been taken from them, isn't that big a deal. You know? If it's the government doing it, then I, I'm just skeptical that, that good will be done with, with that money. Um, but, uh, you know, if it's regular people, then they're, they'll just get less poor. Seems like a win-win. <laughs> well, there is a loser, but let's see. Um, so redistribution is theft. It punishes the people who contribute most to the general prosperity. <laughs> Did I really say the general prosperity? Oh, my God. And provides a disincentive to do more. Yeah, like Ayn Rand said. 
<laughs> I mean, this isn't... None of, none of this is useful. <laughs> um, like, people who contribute most to the general prosperity. There's so many things wrong with that, including, especially the fact of just calling the general prosperity. Whose prosperity? Some people are rich. Some people have virtually nothing. General prosperity sounds like... I mean, it just sounds like someone who's so comfortable and talking, you know, you know, the general prosperity, this very, very wealthy, you know, place that we all live. Well, sure, there are some poor people. Well, too bad for them, you know. Um, they need, they just need the right incentives. And then they'll start their own billion dollar businesses. Because it makes it harder for those people to do what they do best, which is create jobs, wealth, products, and services. <sighs> okay. So, again, um, you, you need a historical viewpoint to realize that this is nonsense, that they don't... I mean, in a way, yes, they create jobs, but that's not a good thing. Because <laughs> what, what people do is, again, because of history, um, because of various episodes of creating massive wealth throughout history, including slavery, um, like, lots of wealth has been created, lots of wealth exists, but it's mostly in the hands of, like, people, you know, a few people, right? Not lots of people. It's not distributed. It's in, a, in the hands of a few. Now, you need money because you're forced to by this system. You're forced to use it by this system. So um, you need to get money somehow. And the, the kind of the normal way, as in the easiest way, um, the most convenient way, even if it's, even if it's not actually easy... Um, or convenient or, or anything, but it's to get a job, right? So the people who already have all the money say, oh, you can have a bit more. You can survive if you spend most of your waking time doing everything I tell you to do. You know, everything I tell you to do. <laughs> so that's what creating jobs means. The people who have all the money, for whatever reason, we certainly can't assume it was all ethically acquired. I mean, even an ANCAP would, would be embarrassed to, to assume that, I think. Um, the, that even by their metrics, it was all ethically acquired. Like, that would just be an, uh, 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 what's the word, uh, a declaration that you don't know history. Um, so that, that's what, and, and you know, so, so people get all the money, and they say, you can, we'll let you survive too, if you do everything we tell you to do. I mean, that's that's what creating jobs means. Wealth, creating wealth. Do they create wealth? No. Workers create wealth, and the owners take most of it. They take as much of it as they can possibly get away with. So no, they do not create wealth. <laughs> Um, they create products and services. No, they don't do that either. Employees do that. It's funny. It's just such a poor analysis, really. You know? Just this assumption about acquiring, about like ethically becoming really rich. Um, <laughs> it's so. So if you just redistribute wealth, you're giving a man a fish, you know, instead of teaching them to fish. But but the thing is, they probably already know how to fish. It's just that, you know, the waterways are contaminated uh, or, or they've been seized for development or something. Like, like frankly, in such a, in this kind of situation, just give a man a fish, you know, they need, let them eat. <laughs> Letting the captains <laughs> Did I really say this? Oh my god. Letting the captains of industry strengthen the economy raises social welfare. Oh my god. 
I I didn't realize how bad um I had it. <laughs> <laughs> like this is just a meaningless phrase it's meaningless it's I think I get where I was coming from but it, in that, it's totally inaccurate just meaningless fucking meaningless I just want to take it and throw it away that sentence <laughs> but eh, who, who can change their past right um, let's see where am I if people want to raise their individual welfare, they can upgrade their education, learn new skills, and start their own businesses. Yeah, you know, because you have so much time and energy after work to uh, to do all those things, obviously. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I don't know why, you know, the early workers who were working 16 hours a day for peanuts, I, I don't know why they didn't just start their own business. I don't understand, you know. Why don't you just, you know, find investment from somewhere, learn some new skills, you know, at the local college. <laughs> These are not solutions at all. Besides, the, the other thing is that this is very much the, the conservative argument. It already exists as a conservative argument. You know, it's already there. Well, well, obviously, if you're poor, it's your fault. Get a better education. Go study. Start your own business. Find a better job. They are not solutions at all. They're just more conservative propaganda. Alternatively, they can live how they want outside the state and monetary systems. What? They can't. You need a revolution for that. <laughs> so I have a few uh, memes in here, and of course this one is supposed to be the, you know, the uh, the hypocrisy of Occupy Wall Street. They say share the wealth, and yet they're relatively wealthy. Yeah, but they're not like the bankers and the owners they were protesting who are way, 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 way richer. Like share the wealth... Yeah, can I have your iPad? Maybe, but the, maybe the guy wouldn't have anything after that. You know, like, and, and like, yeah, I'd love to give this computer to to a homeless person so they can sell it for food or something, or whatever they want, right? But then I won't be able to work. I need this computer for my job. <laughs> so, so and, and, you know, maybe not the iPad. I mean, it, but obviously this is just a cartoon. It's like... It's like asking poor people, you know, like, oh, well, if you if you don't, you know, if you believe in redistribution, then you should work harder and give your give all your money to homeless people. It's like, but but we already don't have anything. We want to share in wealth that's already been created. Like you've already, you've already done enough work and paid enough taxes that that any calls that you're lazy or you 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 don't work hard enough for something are just bullshit. Any any calls that you've you um I don't know that that we need more money for the state to be able to do the things. It's all bullshit. Like. They, you've you've already done enough. They owe you. They have owed you since before you were born. But they try to twist it so you owe them. Why can people not pay for their own insurance and pensions? Well, because they're expensive, obviously. And not everybody has enough money. Perhaps not everyone could, but at the moment everyone pays for everyone else with the usual bureaucratic administration of, enor of an enormous amount of money. Yeah, sort of. Um, and why would it be preferable to organize such things on a national level rather than a local level? Yeah, it's true. The national government is, of course, delighted to make people think it should be nationalized, but it makes little sense to us on the ground. Well, it depends, again, on the, on the government and its priorities. Um, when I say it, what am I even talking about? Insurance and pensions? Yeah, I mean... Why wouldn't those be nationalized? Like, if you're going to have a government. <laughs> um, a good education system would teach people how to manage their finances, which would make us all rich, obviously. 
rather than expecting the state to come along when in any kind of trouble. And debt and personal bankruptcy would be far less common. Would they? Would they? I'd love to to say this to somebody who's in debt, you know? You know, like, didn't you, don't you know how to manage your finances? Don't, do you just drink too much coffee, too many chai lattes or whatever, you know? <laughs> no. We know it. People know it. They, they have all the pointless conservative advice. They know, like, don't, don't, uh, don't spend more than you earn. Like, oh, if only I'd thought of that before I got into debt. Ah. You know? Like, that's not why people get into debt. It's not because they don't know what they're doing. Because they there's so little choice. I mean, look at the nature of debt. Look at where debt comes from. And and why. It's not um it's not an accident. Or or just ignorance. Oh, you're just uneducated. It's nothing to do with that. <clears throat> but a redistribution of wealth wealth is not really a redistribution anyway. Even if you believe it's good to use violence to take money from people who've made it legitimately Yes, I do. Go on. <laughs> Most of that money doesn't go to the poor. Well, okay, that's true. It goes to the enormous pool of government revenues, which pay for generous salaries and pensions of politicians and bureaucrats, subsidies to large farms and airlines. Even Disney gets subsidies. Did you know that? And making war on weaker countries. Does any of it go to the poor? Sure, but not much of it. Finally, there's a fucking... Uh, link, although it's to a YouTube video. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> and the poor are still poor, even after decades of welfare. Yeah, but that's just a shock sign that welfare's not big enough, that there's not enough of it, and that there's never been any reparations. Of course, I will never, in this book, I never say anything about reparations, because I'm an ANCAP. It's, of course, reparations are bad. All redistribution's bad, but actually now... Um, reparations would would be great I don't think it's gonna happen I don't see why it would happen on a you know by government on a massive scale but I mean it should and and I mean you know obviously black American descendants of of, of enslaved people sure they they deserve it but they're not the only ones indigenous people who've had their uh, all their land taken and, and turned into malls I mean they deserve they deserve a lot you know um, like so many people, all the people currently in in ice cages, you know, cages by the the immigration service, like they they all deserve reparations too. They deserve to be let out and compensated for the trauma that that's been inflicted on them for no good reason. I mean, you know, who even cares? Like if someone crosses a border, and they all deserve reparations. <clears throat> Besides, along with providing goods, jobs, and services, yeah, whatever, wealthy people give to charity. Okay, so without um, spending too much time debunking this, read um, the no what's it called? the nonprofit industrial complex, dismantling the nonprofit industrial complex, something like that. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, I, I should have read it, you know, before this <laughs> foundation, you know, these, these rich people start foundations for the purpose of lowering their tax bill, you know, and because it helps them channel their money into causes they believe in. Now, yeah, some of it goes to poor people. Some of it goes to, you know, colleges or something like that, but, but like a lot of it doesn't. You know, and I mean, you could, a lot of these really rich people, of course, will give to like, you know, a, like some kind of right wing think tank or like neo-Nazi organizations, because if, if people, if, if they donate anonymously or if people don't realize that it's like neo-Nazis or something, then, uh, then like we, we don't know about it. We don't even hear about it, but we do know that there are a lot who do, you know, fund these really right-wing causes, and so, like, that's not charity. I mean, they should have less. I don't care how you take it away from them anymore. <laughs> um, 
We know Bill Gates, who brought the world Windows. Oh, I know, he's so awesome for making Windows and then, like, prosecuting anyone for for having a bootlegged copy of it and, you know, uh, <laughs> like, he's a great example of somebody who made his money off rent, rent-seeking, because because he kind of said, he kind of said, okay, here's Windows, now everybody has to pay me for it forever. You know, that's kind of how patents work. And I mean, ANCAPs are supposed to be against patents, and yet still we're saying like, oh, Bill Gates, you know, ethical, all ethical, earned his money ethically. Um, has given $28 billion to charity. Yeah, but look at the effects of that. That's another thing, you know, I just kind of, you know, I just kind of throw that out there without examining where it actually goes, what the effects of it are. Um, a lot of people will complain that his uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, like that it, um, it interferes with their efforts and it gets like all the funding, so that's what everyone flocks to. Um, it's not necessarily the best way to solve the problems that it purports to solve, though, you know? I mean, what does Bill Gates know about any of the things he's talking about anyway? Um, Warren Buffett <laughs> has given $40 billion. Yeah. Where did he get it? Look at what Chuck Feeney does. I don't know who that is anymore. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure we could... Look at that. The Waltons, the Dells, and the Rockefellers have all given in the hundreds of millions, too. <laughs> and if you get rich, probably making others rich in the process, you can, too. Mm, probably helping one or two other people get rich in the process of taking everything from your workers. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, good. The rich don't want to keep the poor poor. I claim, except it, on the one hand that that might be basically true, but they keep doing the things that keep the poor poor. There's no analysis here of why people are poor, but usually it's because they've had everything taken from them. Everything's been stolen from them, you know? That, uh, you know, like, sure, I don't want you to be poor, but if you don't pay your rent on time, I will kick you out of your home. You know, I don't want you to be poor, but I will continue to charge these prices, which are always going up thanks to inflation. And inflation is, is about corporations choosing to raise their prices, whatever an ANCAP will tell you. Um, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to make you poor, but obviously you don't have a lot of money uh, to pay for the things that I'm selling, so, you know, you can either buy it and go broke, or you can not buy it and just not have that thing. Oh, you, uh, you can't afford insulin that used to be free? Oh, uh, well then, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess you might have to die. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want you to be poor, but I'm not going to be giving you any money, either. Hmm. So it's like, this is just one of those, it's just so misleading. You know. They haven't, they haven't wanted their, their people to be poor for at least a hundred years when industrialists like Henry Ford and John D. Rockefeller began paying their employees more. In part so they could buy from the corporation for which they worked. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of corporations, possibly before these, uh, was... Um, they, they, they kind of made you buy from the company, you know, canteen or, or whatever it is. Like, you had to. So you had to spend some of the, the tiny amount of money that you earned at the, at the company where you worked that you probably hated. Also, because if they wanted the best workers, they need to often offer more. That's how the labor market works. Well, yeah. <laughs> No one who's not simply cruel wants the poor to stay poor. Well, I don't know if... I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, they, they might be cruel people, but there's probably a lot of cruel people like that, because if people stay poor, then they're, they're also 
sort of, in, in a way, they're also powerless. Now, of course, they aren't really powerless. Poor people could revolt. Um, and if you don't, if you, if you've ever asked this question, you could read the book, Why Don't the Poor Rise Up? It's a great book, loved it. Um, but, uh, but like, just, I mean, there's, there's so many advantages to the rich of keeping people poor, not keeping everybody poor. They don't want everyone to to have no money, because then who who would they take from, right? But first of all, if you're poor, you're desperate for work, so you're, des you're desperate for money, so you're you'll take any work, right? Um, and that's been that's been key to capitalism f ever since its inception. Um, that you know you need the money. You're poor. Come work for us. You know, come do horrible labor all your life, whatever toll it takes on your mental and physical health, um, you need the money. So, too bad, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, so it might not be cruelty, it might just be callousness. <laughs> um, so that's, that's definitely one thing, you know, like, um, you know, the, the less, the, the poorer they are, the more desperate they are, and the less you have to pay them, you know? Like, if every, if, if there were no more poor, and they were all relatively rich, then um, then you have to pay them so much more because they'd be like, well, I don't have to take this job, you know, I'll take one of the others or nothing or whatever. Um, so, so there's that. And there's other things too. There's also like relative, uh, the, the poverty in like relative, what am I trying to say? Relative poverty by country. There's that too, you know? So if, if uh, the people if most of the people in, I don't know, off the top of my head, let's say, uh, Nigeria, if people in Nigeria say, you know, like, we're, we're done supplying all these resources to foreign, uh, you know, to, to foreign companies so, so, so more people can get rich, right? If they kind of put down their tools and said, we're not doing this anymore, um, you know, they, they could do that, but not if they're desperate for money or desperate for revenue, uh, you know, for the government, right? Like they'll, they'll force the workers back into line. <laughs> so, so the rich don't want to keep the poor poor. Mm, that's a pretty strong claim. And I don't really think it's true anymore. <laughs> Okay, so you've uh, got some idea of uh, of the ANCAP stance on rich and poor and wealth distribution and my more updated uh, stance and knowledge on the subject. So uh, that's, that's going to be all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little. Um, sorry it wasn't live. It doesn't, doesn't look like it's going to be live for a while now, but uh, we'll, um, we'll see how things go. For now, everybody have a great day. See you later.